Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a great day. So I'm making this noobs guide for Resident Evil so that anyone can play through and beat Resident Evil because I feel as though Resident Evil is a fantastic game, especially Resident Evil Remake. It's my favorite Resident Evil game, but it can be kind of intimidating if you've never played one of the old school Resident Evils before. Uh, I know that a lot of people, younger people, are very much into um, you know the remakes, things like that. You're getting into them now. But um, the older ones with the tank controls and all the different stuff can be very intimidating and hard to get into. So my, go my goal for this video is to kind of make a very simple guide that anyone can follow and anyone can beat the game. Because I think once you beat this game the first time, you can beat it anytime on any difficulty. So this is really just to get anyone to be able to play through the entirety of Resident Evil 1 Remake and really get them kicked off and started. Um, so let's go ahead and set this up. So original display, I use alternate controls. I'm using a controller, PS5 controller. I think it's a lot easier to run around. Um, you auto run when you are using the sticks, as opposed to in original, you have to hold down a run button to run. And also you have tank controls. So you can choose not to use tank controls in the newer versions of the game. Subtitles, I'm gonna leave on, I guess. <laughs> it doesn't matter, I'm gonna skip all the cutscenes. Um, you guys can watch the cutscenes as you're playing through the game for the first time. But I've seen them a million times, just for ease of using this guide, there's not gonna be any cutscenes, I'm gonna skip all of them. Also, for ease of using the guide, I, um, I'm i using the door skip mod, I'm playing on PC. So just to cut past, you know, make the video shorter and make it a little, little easier to digest, I'm gonna be skipping every single door. So just first off this question, how do you like your games? If it's your first time playing, just to explain, in the English version, like taking a walk, this is very easy. Like going on a, ha a hike, this is easy. And then like climbing a mountain, this is normal. Once you've beaten the game once, you unlock a hard difficulty. And once you've beaten the game in hard difficulty, you unlock, I believe, real survival, which is basically hard difficulty, I think, but also, um, None of the uh, chests are linked, so you have to go back to the specific chest you put your stuff in. And also, you unlock invisible enemies, which is, I think, hard difficulty, but everyone's invisible, which honestly isn't as bad as it sounds. I've beaten this game many times. Like I said, it's my favorite Resident Evil. Um, I've even been the knife-only run. Not as hard as you think it is either. So just for the noob guide, just so any noob could beat this for the first time, we're going to do very easy. Really, the biggest difference between these three difficulties... Um, there isn't really a huge one. There, you face all of the same kind of enemies and travails. However, you know there may be less enemies in very easy or easy than there are in normal. And there's definitely a lot more like ammo and health items in the easier difficulties. So just to make it easier for yourself, you're basically you're 100% playing the same exact game. There's there's no real difference between the games. You're just getting. You know, it's making a tiny bit easier for yourself by giving you more health items, and I think the enemies do less damage to you, too. So, I'm just going to do, like, taking a walk. And then I would suggest anyone doing this for the first time, go with Jill. Um, Jill has a little bit less health than Chris, but she has a much bigger inventory. Inventory is kind of a really annoying thing in this game, or any Resident Evil, I guess. Um, if you watch Donkey's video, you know that he said, like, the inventory is the main weapon or the doors or whatever yeah she has two more spots than chris makes a world of difference uh between wasting a lot of your time not wasting but using up a lot of time kind of figuring out what you want to take and what you want to leave behind um jill also starts with a handgun not really that big of a deal honestly because chris like immediately finds his handgun you don't have to fight any enemies before you find the handgun for chris so that doesn't really matter um chris does start with the lighter which is kind of nice for the part of the story but the other than the inventory b other biggest kind of setback to using playing as chris over jill is chris um he does not start with the lock pick he starts with the lighter jill has the lock pick so jill can open certain doors that are necessary for the story to go through to get necessary key items chris has to find small keys or old keys throughout the mansion that he uses to open those doors, which they're not that hard to find. And I'll probably do a Chris walkthrough if this kind of, you know, picks up if people like this video. Let me know in the comments, by the way, too, if you enjoy this video and it's been helpful for you. So we're gonna pick Jill. And then also, this is a noob walkthrough. I'm gonna do the worst possible ending just because it makes the game a lot easier. Um, you totally skip a final boss 
if you do the the worst ending. So that's what we're going to go for. But yeah, I just want more people to play the old Resident Evil games, honestly. I think they're super, super fun. So yeah, let's get started. Skip the cutscene. Skip the cutscene. Skip the cutscene. You're checking out the dining room. It's been a minute since I've played this, so bear with me. I beat this game multiple times a year, but I don't think I've played it yet in 2022. You can skip the cutscene. You want to go in here as Jill. Jill, and then you're going to immediately go down the hall. And you're going to find a zombie eating our boy Kenneth. I can, I'm going to skip the cutscene, but immediately run away from the zombie. You can fight it. Um, the only thing you get is, I believe you get more ammo. Kenneth has the ammo. So coming back, skipping the zombie, Barry will kill it for you. you got to leave this room. And when you go to leave, the zombie will get up and leave, but you'll never see him again. You'll probably see here too, there's an ink ribbon and a save. Um, I wouldn't use this. It's taking up inventory space you don't need. You don't need to save right away. This is the very beginning of the game. Um, you come back. Wesker's gone. He asks you to look around. I believe you just got to go up the stairs and come back down. And then you'll get another cutscene. Yep. Go up the stairs. Come back down. Let me skip. Sorry. I'm, I'm kind of getting into it myself. <laughs> you get the lockpick. And then we're going to go back to the dining room. Okay, so come down the dining room. All right, go back through this door that you went through to see the other zombie. Go towards where the zombie was. If you check Kenneth's body, you'll find a film, but not necessary for our playthrough, our noob playthrough. Um, the film, later in the game, you will just... You you can watch it and it shows Kenneth getting attacked. Basically, it's super short, just a couple seconds of getting attacked. Take the two green herbs here, combine them to save space. You don't have to combine them. I just I almost never use green herbs by themselves unless I'm trying to just waste them. Come through this door up the stairs. Immediately go left here. Do not go by that guy in the ground. He will fuck you up. Oops. Uh oh, he's taking a bite out of me. You can shoot him if you want. I don't. It's a waste of ammo. Um, do a better job than I did, though, <laughs> of avoiding him. You want to take this golden arrow right here down the hall. And then you can immediately, you don't have to do this immediately. You can do it later. But examine the golden arrow. Put the point towards you. And then hit X. Looks like you removed. You've got the arrowhead now. Boom. Grab this handgun ammo. You can go back the way you came, or there's a little shortcut this way, though there's a zombie here. Oh, no! And very easy, there's no zombie here, I guess. Nice, so you unlock it. Now you're up in here. So you'll... And here's a defensive dagger. You take this. Next time a zombie grabs me... How do I reload quicker? Oh, uh, that's not what I want to do. There is no quick reload button? On PC, whatever. So the next time a zombie grabs me, uh, it will automatically stab him, and I won't take damage. So go to this door here. You're back in the lobby now. Go through the main door. Now we're outside, the door in the back. There may or may not be zombies here. On this difficulty, there's no one, so even easier. And the normal difficulty, there's normally two zombies here. Oops. Uh, there we go. I'm getting used to the controls. Go to your arrowhead. Go to use once you come over to this statue here. This is going to open for you. Just to show you... Real quick where we are. We are well it doesn't show on here because the mansion opens up as you go through it. Go down the stairs. You see these four faces here. We're gonna have to find four masks and put them on the faces. Come over here to this pedestal. There's a book here. Grab the book, book of curse. Go to the book, examine it, 
turn it around. There's a key on the back. Holy shit. Hidden key. Remove the key. You have the mansion key. And it opens the book. It tells you a cool little bedtime story. Blah, blah, blah. Um, you don't have to. It says it's mansion key. But if you, you know, just to avoid any confusion. Because some doors will say, oh, there's a a uh, sword shaped insignia. Or there's an armor shaped insignia on the door. If you examine the key and turn it around, you'll see it's a sword. There's an engraving of a sword. It'll change the name to just always say sword key now. And same with any of the other mansion keys. Just to make it a little bit easier for you. So you know which key is which. Otherwise it just says mansion key. And you kind of got to like figure it out. But yeah so far so good. Easy peasy. And I hope I'm not going too fast. If you need to uh, pause any part of the video. Go back and kind of watch where I went. So far we just went to the dining room. Went to the back. By where the zombie is. Past the zombie. You know the zombie was eating Kenneth. Uh, up the stairs, went down the hall, grabbed the, the arrow, and then went back to the main lobby and outside the back door and got this key by putting the arrow in. So let's go downstairs now. We have the sword key. that We can open this door here. So very famous um, jump scare in the original Resident Evil. You're going to see something flashing in here. That's the map. If you want to get it, you want to got to climb over this and push it towards the statue and then uh, just climb up on top of it to get it. I'm not going to grab it just because I know the entire mansion and just by walking through the mansion, you are going to find you're going to fill out the map. Oh, that scared me. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. It still scared me. So if you played the original Resident Evil at all or tried it, you would know normally coming in this hall, there's nothing here. Oh, wait, there is. Normally coming in this hall, a dog will come up through the window. In this game, it only comes jumps to the window if you walk from the other direction. So if you went through the door at the end of the hall and came this way. Also, if you push these little, uh, these immaculate plates, these very nice looking plates to the side, um, there will be stuff hidden underneath them. So that one had a de defensive dagger, which super useful. I can't push from this side, I guess. I can't push this one at all, I guess. Okay. Wrong side. Let's push this one. I think this is handgun ammo. Yep. Even more handgun ammo. We are loaded in handgun ammo. We're going to drop the knife the first chance we get. So come out this door at the other side. You want to come outside this door. And this is the first door where Chris would not be able to get to because he doesn't have the lockpick unless you found the small key, which I think the first one's in the kitchen. But with Jill, you can easily lockpick it. Come outside. There's a ton of health here. And this chemical to use on plants. I am going to grab a couple herbs. I don't need them. And part of me is like, I shouldn't grab these. But I should have the space. Immediately combine them. So just to... For easy understanding, two green herbs will heal a lot of health. A red and a green will always full heal. Very similar to the newer games. So if you're ever struggling for whatever reason, even if you're following the guide, you can always come back here and there's going to be red and greens. But just remember, um, if you go from the other side, is there something in here? I always check this room, like not sure if there's something important. I don't think so. I think it's got a defensive dagger. And there's going to be a cutscene where you kill a zombie. Yep, defensive dagger again. It's really nice to talk about defensive daggers. They don't take inventory space, and if you get grabbed, they save your life. So the zombie comes out, Jill kills it, she pukes, and then you can grab the dagger. But keep on moving forward. Later on, zombies are going to pop out of there. Go through this door here, and you, if you're quick enough with Jill, another advantage of Jill is you can get the shotgun through a little trick. So the shotgun is right here. Here's our fourth defensive dagger. We are loaded in defensive daggers because it's very easy difficulty. Grab the shotgun. Now normally when you leave this room, see that go up? There's a little death trap that activates. If you're playing as Chris, you just fucking die. Or you have to leave and then put the shotgun back. I can't recall. But if you're playing as Jill, you come, you check this door. It's locked. 
Oh no, what are we gonna do? You check this door, a cutscene will play, and our good friend Barry will save our life. So we can exit. Barry saved us. So look, now we have the shotgun. Something that Chris wouldn't be able to get till much later normally. You get it in the very beginning of the game. Very, very, very handy to play as Jill. Let's pull up the map just so I can show you again where we've gone through. So we were, went through the lobby to the right, through that door there with the sword key, went down the hall, got a couple items. As soon as we came out of the hall, went to the right, got the plant for chemicals, very important key item. Do not forget to pick that up. We went to the tub on the right of that, got this, uh, the dagger, and then we went through this door, got the shotgun, and then came back out and our boy Barry saved us. So we've done a lot, come through this door, immediately take this door on the right here, and to your right is going to be a zombie. Ah, oh, snap. Uh, a zombie and the save room. He is not dead yet. I'm going to kill him because we're going to go through this fast enough that it doesn't matter. Um, pro tip, zombies will never attack you on the stairs. So... If you lowered a zombie on the stairs, he will not oh, he will not attack you. We know this zombie's dead now because there's a pool of blood around his body, um, which indicates that he has passed on to the next life. But not really, because in this game they added something very new that wasn't in the original RE1 called Crimson Heads. So any zombie you kill in this game, um, you will then have to use this canteen and the lighter, which you'll find later, to incinerate. If you do not, after a certain period of time has passed, or you've gone through a certain number of rooms, they will come back to life as a red zombie that is much faster, does much more damage, and is just a huge pain in the ass. I'm not going to incinerate any zombies because I'm going to go through this game pretty quick. If you get through the area quick enough... And if you're following this guide and get through quick enough, you um, you won't have any Crimson Heads spawn on you. You shouldn't, at least. Um, you should be Gucci. You'll notice in here... So following the guide, you should be fine. If it makes you uncomfortable, um, I would say, at the very least, um, burn some of the early zombies in this area by the save room if you're going to be coming back here a lot. But on very easy, shouldn't be too bad. Um... On a higher difficulty, maybe you tried it again, but once you've beaten this game once, you'll kind of have an idea of what you need to do, where you need to go, so you can play through it as many times as you want. Like I said, it's the same exact game, just less damage and you find more items. You'll notice too, in the item box, we have a first aid spray um, and an ink ribbons, which is nice. There's other stuff in the room I you could pick up as well, so I picked up some more ammo. There's 15 ammo here. Um, I put the survival knife, which we are never going to use again, I believe. No, wait, we do have to use it much later. Much, much later. That's going to be a different video, though. Uh, and the chemical to use on plants in here. Chemical to use on plants, we're not going to need for a little bit still. Um, but we're going to be grabbing it. Actually, not too much longer, but we just want to have space. And honestly, I'm going to put the shotgun in here, too. If you feel more comfortable having the shotgun on you, then, you know, be my guest. Bring it with. You can take the ink ribbon here and save. I'm not going to save. You know what? That's a, eh, I'm going to save. Screw it. Oops. Some saves in here. If this were my PS4 version of this game, it would just be full of saves. But since I'm playing on PC for the door skip... There's only a few from when I played as Chris during a charity stream with a randomizer, actually. I did an enemy randomizer for fun. Got a lot of tyrants who messed me up. Okay, so that should be all we need. Like I said here, just to show you, here is the canteen, fuel canteen. It's at zero right now. To fill it, you find these little containers. There's a couple around the mansion. 
you can only refill so many times so it kind of is it keeps you from killing all the zombies you're meant to avoid them mostly um because you only have so many refills you only burn so many and if you don't go through the mansion fast you're gonna have a lot of crimson heads but once you finish this first mansion part like i said it's not a problem they all just disappear it doesn't matter so what i'm going to do is fill my ammo and combine here so look i've got four empty spaces because i'm jill and that is awesome now we are going to go upstairs I don't need that heal. I'm just going to leave it. There's a zombie right here. I can't go to this door this way, so I'm going to have to go this way. It unlocks on this side. And then now we want to go to that door. So there's some important items here. First, this dog whistle key item, super important. Make sure you take that. It gives you a hint as to where to use it. But I'm just going to take you right there right now to show you where to use it. Uh, some more ammo. It should auto-combine, I hope. Yep. And then on the table over here is the lighter. Another important key item. We are not going to need the lighter for a little bit. So I am just going to... Man, he died so easy too. Um... You probably don't have to worry about... Oh, and I actually just realized something. I am going to bring the shotgun. So I'm going to go drop off this lighter since I'm right here already. And I'm going to bring the shotgun. Because for this next part, having the shotgun makes your life a lot easier. So we're going to go back upstairs. Let me show you the map to show where we're at. Over here currently. Went all the way around. Let's go this way. And I'm just now noticing it's in original mode. So let me switch the display to wide. That should be better. All right. So this wood here, you don't need it. Again, this is just for the second floor map, I believe. Run back this way around the corner here. The second floor run past that door you can't open it yet and we're gonna come out here our boy barry is going to give us a present it's a powerful weapon it's just acid shells crappy crappy acid shells so we don't need those right now what we're gonna do is cross the walkway here go through these double doors we're back in the lobby but we're coming through this way there's a zombie out here but very very easy to avoid he just walks around in a circle super slow uh, I think it's this door. No, no, no. This is the door we came through earlier. Whoops. This door. So go through this door here. Which looks like this on the map. I'm in this area on the second floor. So if you're coming from the lobby, you can always just go up the stairs in the lobby and then go through the door on the left side. We're going through this door here. And then immediately go through this door. Again, another door lockpick opens. If you were Chris, you would be screwed. You would have to find an old key. So what's going to happen in here is, there's nothing here right now, but we're going to equip the shotgun, and then we're going to use the dog whistle. What this is going to do is call a doggy. Get ready to shoot. Boom. Doggy's dead. There's going to be a second doggy leave you don't even gotta worry about this room anymore you never have to come here again if you were to get hit by the doggies and or want to kill both of them and take some damage that green herb little stash right there i'll circle it um you can use that multiple times to heal yourself so even at any other point in the game if you don't have any herbs for whatever reason which it does happen playing these games sometimes you just you're in bad shape and you are you know um, super low health. You can always come back to this area and that green herb will heal you. Just remember those dogs will be there if you didn't kill them. Or that dog will. You only got to kill the first one that shows up. The second one doesn't matter. When you go to leave, it says or you want to get rid of the dog whistle. You don't need it. Say yes. In every Resident Evil game ever, whenever it asks you, do you want to get rid of this? You don't need it. Unless you're trying to do a playthrough where you have every single item, you're always going to say yes. Just drop it. You never have to keep that shit. If it asks you. So we're going to examine 
the dog collar. There's a switch, we're gonna press it. And out comes a little gem, a little coin, it says. You examine the coin, you turn around, hit X, you hit a button, and a little key opens up, changes the shape of a key. And it says right here for you, imitation of a key. So if you're playing this without a walkthrough right now, you probably would have gone back to that area where we got the arrow and kind of explored some more. And you would have found a death trap with a key where if you take the key and don't put it back, you get smoshed. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the store we unlocked to take us back to that hallway quickly. I am going to equip the pistol instead. I was actually thinking about unequipping everything because you're faster when you unequip. Run past this guy. He's got his back to you, so you should be able to get past him easily. And then run past this guy. There he goes. That's our first Crimson Head in the game. Very fast, very strong. When you get through a door, I think every zombie except for one does not open doors. There's a couple zombies that will open doors, but most do not, so you're safe. If you ever need a breather, just go to the door, and you're good. Um, indication that you are not safe is if you went to the door and you sat here for a breather and you heard knocking, you'll hear like pop, pop, pop. And we'll probably hear it later. And then you'll hear a swinging, short, slow swinging sound as the door opens, the zombie will come through. But only a couple places in the game can that happen. And one, I think it always happens no matter what. Um, and it's not really a place you would take a breather anyway. So yeah, just come in here. Normally you take this. This is the armor key and we need to open more doors. It starts a death trap where you would get destroyed, annihilated, Jill would die, unless you have this imitation key. If you don't have the imitation, oops, imitation key yet, you can just put the other key back that you took. So you put the imitation key in here and now you can keep the real key, which is the army key, which is the key you use for most of the doors in this game. And everything resets itself. Again, you can examine it. It says mansion key, but when you look, engraving of armor. It's the armor key. So let's go back the way we came. We don't want to be here yet. That door back there uses a key that you get much later. Come back this way, run real fast. Ah! Ah! I shouldn't have come this way. Screw you, dude. So you can run this way I did and go back to this little door here, which will bring you out. Again, it's very easy, so you're not gonna take a ton of damage. I'm in yellow. You know what, screw it. I'm gonna use the heal, just to heal myself. But this is the quickest way to get back over here where we need to come anyway. So we can see we're back over by where we did the dogs. And if you look to the left there, there's a little staircase. We're gonna to wanna to take that. So we're gonna come back towards where the dogs were now that we have the armor key. See, that means the zombie's trying to break out of there. Just come around this circle here. You can ignore this guy, you can fight him, go down the stairs. Same with this zombie here. Remember, zombies will not attack you on the stairs. You could just ignore him. Or you can fight them, up to you. One thing they will do on the stairs though, is they will puke. They will puke at you, which does damage, but if you keep moving, they will never ever hit you. So here's our another save room with our item box. I'm gonna put the stupid acid rounds away we don't need. I'm gonna keep the sword key for a little bit because I'm not sure if I'm gonna need it. I don't think so though. And I'm gonna drop the shotgun because we definitely don't need that. The only other enemies for the rest of the mansion are going to be or this mansion part i should say you return later are going to be uh, zombies which are very easy to kill with the handgun or especially on this difficulty or just avoid totally uh we do need the chemical to use on plants i'm going to grab my mixed herb and i'm not going to save again yet i don't need to so once we have this and this room here, this is like a medicine room. If you look at this, several kinds of serum here. Many of them are of a sickly color. Shortly, we will have the option to save someone named Richard. He's poisoned. So when you meet Richard, which we're going to meet him very soon, um, you can come back to this room and get a serum from here by pressing X on it and then go back to Richard and it will save him. 
Um, I'm not going to save him for this run because, again, this is a noob run just to get the first play, uh, first uh, playthrough. So we're just going to let everyone die because, again, you let everyone die. The ending is a lot easier. I may do a best ending again later just depending on how much traction this one gets, like I said. So let's exit. That zombie on the ground there can become a crimson head if you take your time. There's a zombie right here. You can just run over here. He missed. This door here, you can use the lock pick to open or a small key as Chris. So to, normally to get the um, the shotgun as Chris, you have to use a small an old key to open that door and inside is a broken shotgun. And then you would use that to replace with the real shotgun. Jill, we can just have our buddy Barry save us. So you don't gotta worry about all that mess. Use the armor key on this door, come through. Here is a battery, which we'll use for another defensive item, a stun gun, which Jill has only, not Chris. Let's look at the map just to see where we're at. So we went down the stairs on the second floor, went to the save room, and we came through this room here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the end of the hall to that room, and we're going to use the chemical for plants. So just run through the hall. Open this door. And there's no enemies in here, but there is a giant plant monster. If you try to walk through this way, the plant will bitch slap you. And you will just take the bitch slap. There's nothing you can do about it. So what we're going to do is come over to this water. We're going to teach this plant a lesson. Use the chemical. It's going to dissolve. And then we're going to come over to these valves. Pump the water. It's going to ask you, which way will you turn the switch? So if you pick green, it's going to send the chemicals and kill all of the herbs, which you may want. If you pick red, it's going to kill the plants in the middle. So pick red. That plant got fucked up. All right, you can come through now. How much space do I have? And this is our first mask. So we need to grab this mask. First of four. If you want, grab a couple heals too. Not necessary again. It, well, I don't know. It depends on how your playthrough is going. If you're taking a lot of damage, you know, having trouble, grab a couple heals. So just to show you again on the map, we are in this room down on the first floor here. We use the army key to get over here to get in and to kill the plant. Now we are going to go to the other side. If you come through this hall now, zombies are going to pop through. They're going to spook you a little bit. Just keep running. Go to this door. You unlock it from this side. And go to this door. And now we're back in the dining room. So this is the other side of the dining room. So to show the map again... Boom. We went through that hallway there. And then we went to another hallway. And then we are now back in the dining room. We made like a full circle on the side of the, of the mansion. So now we are going to go see our boy Richard. Going through this door that we went through before. If you recall, we skipped this door earlier on the east side of the mansion. Now we can use the armor key to open it. We're going to walk this way and get a cutscene. Richard will tell you to get the serum to save him. Um, there it is. This is the room we went to a little bit ago. You can choose to get it and save him. And if you do, he comes in to help you fight a snake later that you don't even have to fight. And we're going to skip um, the fight totally. But he gets himself killed, then you get his shotgun, which is just very slightly better than the normal shotgun and has more ammo, slightly more ammo. I think it has 10 ammo instead of 6. Uh, again, not necessary, so I'm just going to skip it. But if you want to, go there. And for sure, when I do a best ending video, if I do one, it's I'm going to be saving Richard. But yeah, it doesn't matter. We're going to let him die. But to let him die, you just have to waste a little bit of time. If you try to go back in here, I believe it doesn't let you go this way. Yeah, better go get the serum. So we have to let Richard die or save him first. So instead, we're going to go run some more errands while he's dying. While he's slowly succumbing to poison. 
So how much room we got? We got space. So we're going to use the armor key to open this door. And this is a night puzzle. I Let's see if I remember the solution. I believe it's top right, bottom left, and then top left. Nope. I think it's top right, bottom left, bottom right. Let's see what happens when I close this one. Yeah, so now bottom right. And then the top left will push in on its own. There we go. So you have to push in every single night. If you try to hit this button in the middle of the room before you push in every night, poison gas will come in and start to kill you. Um, if you do push this button early, just leave the room. Leave the room and you'll be fine. You can come back and try the puzzle again. So push the switch. This will open up. Go grab the box. What's in the box? The jewelry box. We're going to examine the jewelry box. Always examine these things. Uh, switch, press it. I press the wrong switch. If you do it in the wrong order, it'll shake. So what you want to do is press the back switch and it opens up and there's a mask inside. It's the second death mask. So this one is without, without eyes or mouth. And this one is without eyes. So we got two out of four masks already, pretty easy. All right, now keep going this way. We are going to come back out this hallway here towards the save room. We wanna go put get one more mask and see these guys are still here. We're gonna get another mask and we're gonna put three of our masks away because we don't wanna try walk out down the hall with four masks, that's just annoying. Oh, our boy Barry left us a ton of stuff. So let's just grab this. Oh, I don't have any room, whoops. I'm gonna put some of this crap away, I don't need this. Just to pick this up. Wait, I did have room, it combined. <laughs> so grab the hanging ammo. Grab the flame rounds for the grenade launcher. Grab the first aid spray. And I grab the first aid spray just in case you need them later. I'm not gonna bring them with me. Using a first aid spray, um, actually it doesn't lower your grade in this one. I'm thinking of the old one. In the old one, if you use the first aid spray, it lowers your grade. Put all this stuff away. I'm going to grab the two masks. And the lighter, yeah, and the lighter, and a, no, I don't need a heal. I'm Gucci. So let's go back out here. Again, these zombies still laying here. Menacingly, if you try to go through this door this side from this way, let me show the map again where I'm at, over at the save room over here on the right, on the east side of the mansion. If you try to go to this door on this side, it'll warn you the knob is shitty and it's gonna fall apart. Um, however, you can go through twice before it breaks from this side, which is all we need. And once you do, it breaks and you can't go through from this side anymore. But when you come back to the mansion later, um, someone will have fixed it for you, so it doesn't matter anyway. Come down this way, take the immediate door to the left. Don't even worry about the zombie. Your armor key opened it. And we've got a little puzzle here with crows. If you fuck this puzzle up, these crows attack you. Uh, again, just leave the room and you will be fine. So we have to make the headband green, the necklace purple, and the bracelet orange to do that. We're going to hit this button on this side. So he's got the orange bracelet. 
and then we're gonna hit these two on this side. So the way this works is they have stained glass. They're, they're each wearing the things we need the lady to be wearing, like they're matching it, but the buns on each side change the color to different colors. So we just wanna make sure we hit the buns on the right sides to turn them the correct color. So now the headband's green, the bracelet's orange, and the necklace is purple. So again, this one, you wanna hit on the other side by the door you came in. On this two, you want these two, you wanna hit on the side by the portrait. We go up here, examine. Boom, press it, and it opens. They won't attack because we got it right, and they respect our ability to solve puzzles. And boom, right away, here's our third mask. Death mask. And this door here, this makes a little shortcut to the outside from the save room area. You can lock, pick it now, and get out here. Again, if you're playing as Chris, tough luck for you. You need a key to open that up, so no shortcut for you, unless you've just been collecting hella keys, which I highly doubt at this point. Go back down here to where we got the, the Book of Curse with the sword key outside in the grave, and then just start putting masks on. Wrong mask. I don't know the order off the top of my head. I should, I've played this so many times. And every time you do, a chain will pop on this little Dracula coffin. Oops. Nothing happens until you put all four masks here, but there's going to be a boss fight. But if you follow this guy, the boss fight is insanely easy. Not this mask here. And the reason I put the mask here now, some people will get all four first, then come and do it at once. But that's literally half of your inventory. So you, And you want to probably have heals for the boss fight and ammo. So I do these three at once, so later we just have to come with one to do the boss. Let's go up the stairs now. We need one more death mask, but this is the hardest one to get. So let's go back to our boy Richard and see how he's doing. Hopefully he's dead by now. Come back through the shortcut with the crows that we made before. Just to show you the map again, this is where we are currently. We're still on the first floor. It's still marking that area on our map where the serum is because the game thinks we're going to try to save Richard, but we're not. He's donezo. Come this way and then take this door here from this side to go back to the save room. Again, the um, you can take it from that side as many times as you want, but if you take it from the other side, um, I don't have to go to the save room. I have what I need, I'm pretty sure. If we take it from the other side, you can only do it twice from this side. Come back upstairs, go to this door to go back to this long hall to go back to Richard. I hope to God he is dead. <laughs> Otherwise, we gotta go find something else to do really quick, which isn't too hard. I just would rather have him dead now. Richard's dead, I think. So now we can come to this door. Poor, poor Richard. We barely knew you. Take out this zombie. He doesn't matter. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I have so much handgun ammo. Because this is very easy. There's, speak of the devil. Here's more handgun ammo. And then you're going to want to, before you move that uh, bookcase, you're going to want to light this candle using your lighter. This is why we brought the lighter. And then once you light that candle, this guy comes to the door. If you want, just kill him really quick. Uh-oh. And then you want to go back here. Surprise, surprise, there's another zombie here, but he doesn't try to attack you until you actually go in there. So he'll pop out now. This guy's back alive. Stay down. Go back in here. Shit. And musical score. So just to show the map, we are over here on the east side, second floor, by where Richard died. Um, you go to the door on, at the end of Richard's hall, and then you go to the door on the left. I'm going to have to kill this jerk because he's in the way. That sound was a critical hit. His head exploded. 
Um, with the handgun, there is a chance of a critical hit whenever you shoot someone. It just is basically a headshot where the head explodes. Unlike traditional zombies, where headshots kill them, the zombies in Resident Evil, um, they're a mutation, so it's not based off the brain. So it's based on the amount of damage you do to them. So you just have to do enough damage where they can not they can no longer regenerate. So a headshot won't kill them, you just have to do enough damage. Um, so we kill this zombie by Richard or knock him down, whatever. We just run past. Now with the music, we are going to want to go back to the main lobby. Go downstairs. We don't need the... Oh, we do need the lighter still, but good thing we still have it. Go back towards the dining room. Come up to the end of the dining room, and we're going to need to grab the... Shield here, by the fireplace. You may have grabbed this earlier and put it away. If you did, make sure you have it for this. If not, go back to the save room via the richer route um, and get it. But I leave it because we have to grab it now and it's on the way. So grab the emblem. Go into this little hallway here towards where Kenneth is. You want to go up this hall. There's a zombie here. You can try to avoid him or shoot him. See how that door's shaking? A zombie's going to go through that door. Go through this door here using the armor key. And you're going to find this piano room. Very chill. So what you need to do is come over here to the other side of the piano room. You're going to find this bookcase, push it. And just to show you a map again where the piano room is, it is on the west side. You go to the dining room, go into the hall at the end of the dining room, and go right and take the second door on the left. We push the bookcase. You get the second half to the musical score. If you would check the musical score we got it before, you would see that it was incomplete. Now that we have both halves, we can combine. And now Jill knows how to play music. If you had tried to play this piano earlier, you would know that she doesn't know shit about the Moonlight Sonata. So let's use it. And now this little secret passage opens up. And this is the reason that we uh, grab the wooden one, because we want this gold one instead. When you take the gold emblem, the door closes behind us. So if you didn't grab the wooden emblem, you would have to put the gold one back and go get it. No big deal. But we just put the wood, the shitty wooden one in here, and we take the new hotness gold one. We're just pulling a little switcheroonie really quick. So now you can leave this room... There's a zombie here. His back. Little trick. If a zombie's back is ever to you, you can easily just run past him. He will never grab you as long as you keep moving. So just run. We're going to take this door and we are back in the dining room. And what we need to do now is put the golden emblem where the wooden one was, which will activate the clock. We can mess with the gears now. So if you look at the picture here, you will see that the guy with the little sword is stabbing the other guy in the stomach, and the guy with the big sword is stabbing the guy in the head. So we want these hands to match that. So they trick you, they do it backwards. So what you want to pick is the long, large gear. It doesn't matter which direction, you just got to turn it twice. Keep turning, large again, and boom. No, done turning. The clock will go off. And this will move. This gives us the mansion key. So this is the key to go check out our boy, the snake. You turn it around, you examine, there's an engraving of a shield. So we know now this is a shield key, so we have the sword, armor, and shield key. I shouldn't be holding all these damn keys, but it doesn't matter. We're totally fine. So we're going to go fight the snake now by Richard. But we actually don't need to fight the snake. We're not going to fight him at all because it's a waste of time. It's not a true fight. If you beat him or not, it makes no difference at all. You're just wasting your ammo. If you had saved Richard, though, Richard would come to help you fight the snake, and then he would drop his shotgun, which you could steal. 
Um, but we're going to the lobby. We're on the second floor. This picture is super creepy. Reminds me of RE8, kind of. And then we're on the second floor. We're going to go to this bottom right red door. We haven't gone here yet. You can go here at any time, but I usually just come here now because we don't really need it. And you can use the armor key again. Opens it up. And we're going to find another member of stars, our boy Forrest. There's some more ammo here. We have a ton of handgun ammo, an insane amount. Uh, there is one difference on higher difficulties. Forrest will get up and fight you. And if you've beaten the game before and you have, um, you try to play again on the same file, uh, Forrest will randomly appear in rooms and attack you. And he is the strongest zombie in the game. And if you shoot him, he explodes and you die. So we're going to grab the grenade launcher from Forrest. I'm going to refill this. And the grenade launcher is the strongest weapon Jill gets outside of the rocket launcher. So we basically have all of her good shit already. And the rocket launcher, you only get when you're fighting the final true boss. And we're not even going to fight him. So I've got the grenade launcher. We're going to go back towards where Richard was. So if you're feeling real ballsy, you can fight the snake. But again, there's literally no benefit to it. Except for if you... Um, let, if you oh, shit! If you saved Richard, you probably want to fight a little bit to get Richard to show up. Because he doesn't show up right away. That way he can drop the gun for you. So walk to the end here. We walked past where Richard died. Now we have the shield key. Since we've opened every door, we can discard it. Okay, if you come around this corner here... And check this shelf. There's some shotgun shells. And then we gotta walk to the very end. And here is the last mask. But first there's a snake. I can't even skip this cutscene. It really wants to see a snake. So we immediately see a snake back here. Grab it. Or the mask I mean. And then just run back to the door. The snake is a huge loser. And can't do anything about it. Just leave. For the third time, you do not have to do that fight. It does not give you anything if you do it. This guy's got his back to us, so we can just run past. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So we have the fourth mask. Let's go back to the save room. So we go around this hall here. Again, this is where we are on the map on the second floor. Go down the hall. We've been quick enough. These guys shouldn't be Crimson Heads, good. And this may be the last time we're going to see him. I can't recall. We're going to go to the save room. I'm going to get rid of the lighter. I don't think we need this again until way later. Get rid of the shotgun shells. And I think it's safe to get rid of the sword key. Okay. I'm going to keep the armor key just in case. I don't think I need it, but just in case... Um, and then I'm going to grab the herbs. 99% sure I'm not going to need them. But just in case, again. And since we have the grenade launcher, we should be Gucci. I'm going to drop a gnarly ass save. Again, not worried about this fight at all. But I'd feel like a real idiot if I died or something else happened. Our second save here. And also... No shame if you've been saving more or picking up ink ribbons and saving more. I just tend to skip them because I know the game so well and you want to save inventory space. But if you need to go back and save, just, you know, stop, pause the video um, and then, you know, kind of get back to where I am. And we're going to go through this door the second time. It's going to break. Go through anyway. It broke. So we're going to take our little shortcut. Through the crows. Back through this way. Back down where we put the masks. And here's the map again. We're outside. Alternatively, you could go back up the second floor. Uh, if, you, if you're really worried about the door breaking, go back up the second floor. And... Um, go to the Richard way and then go back to the lobby and then just take the door in the lobby at the back of the lobby 
but I don't give a shit about the door. I'm just going to break it. Let's go down here. We're about to have a boss fight. Technically, you're second if you fought the snake, but you don't need to fight the snake. Put the last mask on. And now the last chain's going to break. Uh, he won't pop out until you kind of walk towards him. Equip the grenade launcher. You can do this with a shotgun, too. He's pretty easy with the shotgun. I just think... For noob's sake, the grenade launcher makes it... He's basically one shot, I believe. There he is. Our little Dracula Crimson Head. The door closed behind us. Which, actually, I've never tried to leave before going and chucking him. I wonder if you can. So just... Boop! Is he done? Oh, nope. Boop again! Now he's done. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. All right. We've got some more shotgun shells here that we don't need, but we'll save them anyway. We've got a million handgun ammo. Look inside his chest, and there's a switch. And then also is a stone and metal object. So now what we're going to do is let's show the map. Oh, it doesn't really show shit because we're down here. We're going to go back through the crow way, but instead of going towards the save room by the door we broke, we are going to go to the door across from the crow door. So let's go back this way towards the crow room. Hello, crow friends. We want to kill this zombie, because that's where we got to go. Or you could just, don't do not do what I did and kind of like fucking play chicken with him. Um, you could also just tank him if you want, because we've got so many defensive items, unless you've been using up your defensive items. Come out here. You have to be very fast about this, otherwise a dog will attack you. But go straight to this little thing here. And then use the stone and metal object. Boom. It will open this door here, go through the door. There is a dog about to attack you in the back. And we made it. We are out of the mansion. So now we can take the shotgun shells. Oh, here's a defensive item. So we've got even more defensive items. There's a bunch of heals here we don't need. Just to show on the map where we are. So we went to the room across from the crow room. And we went through, and there's a little outside area. You put the stone and metal object in the pedestal there, and you get to come into this little shed. So there's two ways you can come out of the shed. Uh, this way, or down these stairs. You're going to want to go down the stairs first, because you're going to hit a roadblock if you go this way. And there's some enemies there, and you would hate to have to come backwards to get the item. So the key item you need is down these stairs. Take the heels if you got room, which I'd be surprised if you do. Come down this way. You're going to see some signs of some chickens. The trick to these is you want to get the dogs at the end to face a certain way. But the way I remember it is you always want to have the chicken point towards the direction of the lower right-hand corner of your screen. So in this instance, it's west. And also you want to hit yes right before it gets that direction when it's on a slow path. So right here, see it's slowing down. Oops, I fucked it up. Uh, it's going to make the dogs at the end move. That was wrong. You gotta hit the switch again to get it to go. You know, I haven't messed that up in a long time. There we go. Boom. So the red one, well, both of them, you want to get them to face towards the lower right-hand corner of the screen. And then just say, no, that's where we want to be. And I keep saying both of them, but you guys haven't seen it yet. There is a blue one down here, too. So again, lower right-hand corner, we want it to go north. Stop it. And you want to make the dogs not face each other because they fucking hate each other and they will get into a dog fight. But making them face different directions will open the door. Also, I lied about the 
Grenade launcher being our strongest weapon. The Magnum actually is your strongest weapon. I just totally skipped it because we don't need it. But there's an item you can get in the mansion um, with some bees that attack you that will let you get the Magnum in this area right here with a very simple puzzle. I skipped it. We don't need it. Fuck the Magnum. So just keep going this way. And now we hear some foreboding chains. We are outside this walkway. You can see there's a little walkway here and then a little door, which is going to be to a shack to our good friend Lisa. If you watch Welcome to Raccoon City, you would be aware of Lisa Trevor, who is um, immortal. This is where she lives. This is her casa. Um, also, I haven't been reading any files. As you're following along with this, of course, you know, read files, do whatever you want to do, and watch the cutscenes. I'm just not doing it. So immediately go up here, go in her shack. There's some heels out there. In the harder difficulties, there are not heels out there. I know that for a fact. Because I've needed the heels before. Go up here in her shack. And you're going to find a save and a chest. We're going to drop some crap we don't need in this chest. Like the grenade launcher and the shotgun shells and the armor key. All we need is the pistol right now. Not even going to save. And then go across from the chest and there's this little like drop down area here. If you hit X, Jill will drop down. And then here's a crank. This is that key item I told you we would need. If we went the other way, it would be screwed. So then go back up. And we're going to run into our good friend Lisa. You hear the door open. Very spooky. Keep going. And she fucking sucker punches you. Blah! And then for some reason puts you in bed. She can't tell if she wants to be your friend or not. And I think this is part of the reason why... In the movie, they made you a friend. Because it's like, maybe she does. Maybe she just wants to beat the shit out of you. I don't know. Tear your face off. Maybe you just woke up too soon. Who knows? So Lisa is going to be blocking your way now. And you just got to run past her. You literally cannot kill her. At best, you can damage her enough to stun her for a little bit. Um, you shouldn't have the fire... Oh, she's going to hit you a little bit. You're very lucky if you don't get hit by her as you're going past. But it doesn't do a lot of damage. Um... You'd be very lucky to have the firepower to take her out. Like you'd have to have the grenade launch and the shotgun probably, or just shoot her with a shit ton of handgun ammo, which would be kind of dumb because she is right in your face, so she would just beat the shit out of you. Come back down this way. There's a zombie here now. Oh shit! The camera angle messed me up. I almost ran into his loving embrace. Just go past him. He's very easy to get past if you need to shoot him, but if you just go on the other side of the tree, he can't get you. Keep going down the path through this gate, back the way we came. We want to go back, basically, to that, um, to the shed. Also, if you linger here for too long, these, these crows will start to attack you. They are not as cool as their cousins. Or if you were, like, trying to do that puzzle in there that, uh, would give you the magnum, they will attack you as you're trying to do it. Very, very, very simple puzzle, so you probably only get, like, hit once or twice. But just a heads up. Back in the shed. And now we're going to take the other door, which we haven't taken yet in the shed. Right here. There's dogs here. Run past them. You do not want to fuck with them. Just go straight to this gate on the other side. If you're fast enough, they will not be able to do anything. There's no enemies in here, but you're going to see a big pool blocking your way. You want to come over here to this little thing with looks like a hole in it. And we're going to use this crank. So Jill is going to... We're going to watch a shitty, really cool, low quality cutscene. And Jill's going to crank the water out of it. You hear the sound of a waterfall in distance. And now we can go through the water. Cross over here. Go up this ladder. And keep running. Snakes are going to drop on you, but they, well, actually, they're not dropping. Maybe on harder difficulties they drop? I guess on very easy they don't drop. But normally snakes will drop on you, and if you linger too long, they can poison you. 
Um, so you want to just keep running. Run past these guys. Run over here. Crow is attacking. Run over to this door. So let's look at the map. We open this door from the shed at the bottom. Went up. Uh, used the crank to cross the water. Went down the path. Came out this door and then just went to the door over here. It's a courtyard. Uh, there's a red herb here. I'm just going to take it because red herbs are kind of rare. And I'm going to box it later in case we need it. We probably shouldn't. There's the snakes. There's some more snakes. Maybe the snakes and the other one only come when you come past. But just keep running because they can poison you. And poison is permanent. Um, poison will get you down to a danger state if you leave it long enough. I don't think it kills you, but it'll put you in danger. And if you do get poisoned, right here is a bunch of green herbs. I would just leave them. Don't even pick them up. I am fairly certain this is the only part of the game you can get poisoned. Uh, maybe the spiders poison you too. Actually, I think they do. And the, and the snake can poison you, but yeah. Um, if you want, fuck it. Just put them in your box. But uh, you know what? I'm going to put some in my box. Why not? Just in case. Just so you have them. Throughout the rest of the game. Fill up your inventory with them. If you come in the hall, this is the next area of the game. So I'm going to be ending this soon. This is a save room right here on the right. So we came in. We took the immediate door on the right. Going to use the box. Put all this crap away. We don't need any more. Again, we really only need the handgun. So we've got so much room for activities. I'm going to take this. This save music is so beautiful. Some of the best in the game, in the series. This and Code Veronica and Zero have the best save music. Let's save our progress now that we're in the new area. With the new increments we got. The color of your save is different based on the difficulty that you're playing through on. So though it could be green, could be white for normal. Whatever color. All right, and that's it. This is it for the mansion part of the new walkthrough. We've done the whole mansion. Um, in my opinion, the mansion is the hardest part of the game um, for for newcomers. Once you've done the mansion, you kind of got a feel of it, just like any other Resident Evil game. You know, once you get to a certain point, you've got a feel of the game, and you, for the most part, know what you're doing. We're gonna fight more treacherous enemies, but. If you made it through the mansion, you can 100% beat the rest of the game. I think anyone can beat this game as long as you just give it a solid effort, and especially if you follow this walkthrough. Um, but yeah, the mansion's like 60% of the game, the first part of the mansion. You do come go back again later, but only for a little bit. It's much, much shorter. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, and subscribe. I will be putting out a second part sometime later with the uh, this next part, which is... The residence here, this is its own little part, and then after that, um, the mansion again, and then so on and so forth. But yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will catch you later.